watching Canadian Muslim News on Muslim Network TV. From Toronto, Ontario, I'm Catherine Bullock. Assalamu alaikum and greetings of peace. Today, a conversation with someone from the Siraj Society, founded to help those in need. Her name is Alia Ahmed. But first, some news headlines. Yellowknife Islamic Center receives $1.5 million to rebuild community space. First Rohingya Community Centre opens in Kitchener, Ontario. Targeted shooting leaves 21-year-old Muslim man dead in Calgary, Alberta. Dips in polls drives far-right presidential candidate to appeal to Muslims. And now the details. After more than three years without a mosque, the Islamic Centre of Yellowknife will receive federal money to help build a new space. The old mosque was demolished in 2019 to make way for the new building. It will support the 600 Muslims in Yellowknife, as well as cater to community initiatives, including youth programs and therapy. Canada's Community Revitalization Fund, otherwise known as CANNOR, is investing a total of $3.1 million into nine different community centres in the Northwest Territories. CANNOR will contribute 687000 and the Islamic Society of North America, North America, Canada, will contribute 860000 towards the new mosque. Dozens of attendees celebrated the opening of Waterloo's first Rohingya Community Centre Saturday in downtown Kitchener, Ontario. Founded by Saifullah Muhammad and Javed Elam, both Rohingya refugees, the centre will aid the Rohingya community here. Mohammed says he hopes the center can grow to become a hub where Rohingyas can share culture, language, and create programs for themselves and the broader community. According to the founders, the new center is located in a place that has more than 600 of Canada's 1,000 Rohingya. Calgary police have identified 21-year-old Ali al Akl as a victim in a recent shooting. Officers found al Akul dead in his car at an intersection after he was shot multiple times in what they say was a targeted attack. Sam Namura, the co-founder of the Calgary Immigrant Support Group, told local media sources that he has known al Akul and his family since they came from Syria in 2016. al Akul had just graduated and had a bright future ahead of him with plans to become an engineer. He was also planning a trip to visit family in Syria. This is Calgary's sixth homicide this year. In spite of anti-Muslim, anti-immigration rhetoric in his campaign, far-right presidential candidate Eric Zemmour has asked Muslims to vote for him. Once tipped as the campaign's second place winner, his popularity has dropped in recent polls. He is under fire for admiring Russian President Vladimir Putin. At a recent rally, Zemmour claimed, Zemmour claimed that the media and political opponents have falsely claimed that he wants to prevent Muslims from practicing their religion, international media sources reported. He said everyone needed to be honest. Muslims had a right not to be French, but that it was not up to France to adapt to your culture. And that's it for the news. A famous proverb that you've probably heard of goes something like this. Give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Teach a man a fish and you feed him for a lifetime. Today we talked to Alia Amar from the Saraj Society, which are trying to do just that with Muslim families in Mississauga. Welcome to the show. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, sister. Now, I opened with that proverb, which nobody apparently knows the origin. I've always thought it was an African proverb. In Islam, we also have service. Tell us about the way that you're helping the families to uh, to fish instead of just handing out the fish. Yes, correct. Um, first, thank you for having me. Um, the Sira Society is a nonprofit organization just established two years ago. And the idea was for really um, great women who was working in the same field back seven, eight years, helping newcomers, helping no, uh, low income people coming to Canada to find their way, uh, built a new life. They are coming from different uh, countries, from different backgrounds. 
so our target was um, instead of just give them, help them with some money, some food, we have the services too. But the main issue was to focus on how to uh, let them survive, find their own, find their job. So establish type of um, different um, projects and the classes uh, to teach most of the the families, women, moms with their kids. So they need how uh, uh, to survive, how to work. So we have what different kind of, uh, What kind of project in class are you doing, doing to help the women find work? Yeah, um, at first uh, we have the English classes to improve their language here because, you know, they are coming from different countries, different backgrounds. Then we establish uh, some other projects um, uh, like how to, um, you know, the beauty salon now. Uh, every all the women wants that, likes that, and want to work in this field. And uh, cooking classes, um, sewing classes. So everything the women can do from her home, support herself, support her family, and then maybe uh, uh, starting with the small businesses, then growing with um, bigger and bigger uh, business. Well, I know, I mean, I wear a headscarf and finding a hairdresser who's female in a, in a good environment is definitely a hot find. So is that one of the things that you're going to be helping a, a woman do? Yes, uh, we are now classes running um, three months ago till now. It's on, ongoing, helping people how to treat them, uh, give them training um, through the um, professional trainers. Uh, to teach them how to um, do all this, especially for the Muslim women. They can go to um, mixed salon, let's say, women and men. So uh, they have this opportunity to, to do it, to open it, and then helping them to do the exam later on, to get their certificate officially, so they can open their own salons or go work with somewhere, at least to start something to start with. And are most of your clients women? Most of them women, um, like we are helping everybody, everyone in your country, everyone, low income, but just because the uh, the clients, families, moms with kids, with husbands. So uh, that's, uh, that's why, like um, most of our clients, women, plus we are helping to also the um, uh, parents, uh, single parents, single mom, um, how to survive, how to find her own job, how to find her own life uh, in a new country how do they find you how do they learn about the society uh in fact sister and Tisar has lots of good network and relationship and um when first she was working from home from her garage and then until we decide to know let's go out let's go officially let's um, establish this organization and help people officially uh, so, you know, from one to one, like let's say a certain family from certain country when they came here and other family came and say, okay, hey, this place help us with this and this and that. So it's a good network, good relationship out there. Hmm. And uh, are there different language groups? Is it mostly Muslim or Arabic or Somali or Ukrainians or Afghan? Like how how is it? We have a variety of families. Uh, uh, how we are helping them, most of them Arabic, mm. but the other Afghani, Pakistani, um, Indian, like lots of variety there. Mm. So we are all um, helping with some time with, uh, with the interpreters because we don't have all the time available, like let's say um, Afghani or Urdu or whatever. So we are helping each other. And you mentioned earlier that you are hiring trainers to give the teachings. How do you afford to pay trainers? Till now, we don't have any funding from the government. Everything, all the um, projects based on a donation. So we ask for a donation to cover this project or to cover the um, equipment or the payment for this trainer or this trainer. Some of them, they say, okay, let's say, um, uh it's a thousand per class so the some of them they say okay we're gonna get 50 percent and the other 50 percent is the donation some of them they want more um all of it so that's why we ask for donation all the time and that's also based on good relationship and network with others donations and fundraising is always a difficult thing to do how do people find you if they want to donate 
uh, this is what I want to mention to that's a good question. It's uh, a trust. Uh, so we built a trust. So if we ask, like, let's say Sister Antisar asked, we have this project today or we need to help uh, this family to, let's say, to pay a rent mm -hmm. or to do this expenses or that expenses. So everybody uh, happy to donate because they built a trust. They know where their money go. They know what's the result. They they saw lots of successful stories after they attend the classes or after we really help them. They are struggle in one or another of um, these life issues. So it's the trust again. That's the key. Yeah, I'm glad to to know that you've been been able to do that. It's a very very special trait. One of the things that I believe you do is helping pay for funerals. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Correct. Um, since last year, we noticed uh, many families that are clients in our organization or friends, or we know them, they struggle when they had a sudden death because um, we know the government, if they are on social assistance, they help with something. But some of the people, they are already here as a refugee climate, so they don't have, they don't have that benefit or they are not uh, permanent resident yet or Canadian yet. So they don't have money. They don't know how to do so now we establish it's called um, in Arabic Ikramayit. So uh, it's based also on donation, let's say even $1, $2, $20 a month. But this donation is continued so we can cover the sudden death of um, any of our clients or anybody needs needs that. Mm -hmm. And if someone wants to contribute, is there a website that they can donate to? Uh, we have uh, so far um, a mail transfer, but we are willing to put it on the website as just just a, a project by itself that the donation goes. Like we have this system, uh, if you want to donate, let's say something, so we say, okay, ask you the uh, your option to donate for uh, the death project, to supporting training for the newcomers, to also we have other projects. It's a very big one. It's called Qurba Hasana for anybody they have really big loans or big they they don't know how to do it but uh, after the assessment and and see they are eligible to pay that so we give the the donor the uh, the option mm. where to put their money where to donate right and so the last thing you mentioned just now is kohasana which is basically helping someone pay off the loan with money that carries no interest in repayment correct Correct. So we're almost out of time. Let me squeeze in a last question. You mentioned a success story. How about sharing one with us? Uh, we have one um, of the women that was uh, part, a student, part of um, the, let's say, all together, not just grooming, the beauty salon package. And uh, after she took the training with us, she opened her own. Uh, she was in her basement. But after she got her certificate, uh, we helped her with the equipment. We helped her uh, to buy the stuff that she needs. And we help her also with advertisement. We have a group of uh, many groups for the advertisement. That's this woman is new. She's good. She gets her certificate. She's a professional. And from there, she built her relationships. She built her profession well. And she's now so good with that work. What a great thing to hear. But we're out of time. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for watching Canadian Muslim News. If you like what we do, please share, like, and subscribe. Stay safe and God bless.